My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand all alone. Hey everybody, Keith here. Coming to you from the back deck as always. Beautiful summer morning here in uh, Fultondale, and I'm um, so thankful that I get to have this time to study a little bit and share some perspective with you. You know, perspective is everything, and I hope to share mine with you and hope that it will help you in some small way. And I don't think anybody would argue then, considering perspectives and how often we share ours, that we would argue the importance or the relevance of social media and the effect it's had on us in our lifetime. It's been a game changer. Never before in our history could you get the news as it was happening while simultaneously being updated on your best friend's vacation or your niece and nephew's graduation. It's an amazing connector that has even helped further the gospel message. It's produced verifiable results that I can even attest to from personal experience. With it, we have truly been able to fulfill Jesus' command to go into all the world and preach the gospel. You couple that with our country's great freedoms, including the freedom of speech. It has made social media almost universally then the way that human beings share and teach and learn and generally interact with one another, how we connect with one another. But sadly, like with all things, that God can use for good, you know then that Satan can also use them for evil, for his agenda. The Bible calls Satan the God of this world. As a matter of fact, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Paul says, And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. For the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers, so they cannot see the light of the gospel and the glory of Christ who is in the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. Meaning that if God can use us, human beings, to share his message, then Satan can also use us to block his message. And it talks about how the God of this world, that would be Satan, blinds the minds of unbelievers so they cannot see. His best tool to blind people so they cannot see or they cannot hear or they refuse to listen or understand is to cause confusion or to cause chaos by making arguments against these teachings, against these truths that we know. By making, making an emotional plea or an emotional argument by nature. And the funny thing about that little bit is that not only does this apply to those who would try to stop the message of the gospel, but also to Christians who should be sharing the message of the gospel. Christians who should know better. Satan doesn't discriminate. Of course he wants us to create discord and confusion. And he does so by inciting in us a response to something that's emotional, something that we take personal. And yet, Proverbs 29 verse 11 says, A fool gives full vent to his spirit, but a wise man holds it back. And in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23, Solomon says, Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. We have to remember, Satan loves nothing more than dividing God's people. Because if he can divide us, well then our message falls on deaf ears. The world around us of unbelievers look in at us and they see that we can't even agree. We can't even be in harmony. We can't even be connected in unity. Well, why would they want anything to do with that? The world's already like that and we're to be set apart and different from the world. Satan loves nothing more than dividing us. And all throughout the New Testament, we see example after example of attempts to divide the Lord's people by entering false teachings or entering controversial topics or causing confusion and chaos to isolate and separate one another. 
Huh. Where social media comes into light here is that a tool and a resource that should be used to unite and strengthen us, Satan uses to divide and destroy us. Plain and simple. We are connected to the whole world. And yet we find ourselves these days utterly alone and disconnected from people sometimes in the same room. From members of our family. Even from each other in the church. Could it be that God didn't wire us to carry every event taking place in, a, in every part of the world? At every moment as if it were ours? Could it be that technology has produced a faux omniscience and a faux omnipresence in us that is hurting mankind and not helping it? I mean, it's just a thought. But with that, could it be that this false sense of enlightenment that we gather from simply logging into our social media feeds and getting all this information, this false sense of enlightenment is what drives our vitriolic rants and our passionate pleas of indifference to even our brothers and sisters in Christ? I believe it could be so. So here's the thought. Maybe not every thought, maybe not every position, or maybe not every stance should be shared on social media. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't share these things. But maybe social media is not the place. Because if it's not helpful but hurtful, if it's not connective but divisive, if it's not constructive but deconstructive, then maybe we should give it a few hours before you hit the share button. Maybe you should give it some prayer before a knee-jerk reaction leaves Satan now in charge of the aftermath, which will follow, by the way, of a 200-comment thread on your social media, on your post, that yields absolutely no fruit. Worse than that, it gives God no glory. So most importantly then, if it is something that needs to be said to a person, then say it in person. The Apostle John said this in 2 John, verse 12. He said, Though I have much to write to you, I would rather not use paper and ink. Instead, I hope to come to you and talk face to face so that our joy may be complete. John had a lot to say, and yet he knew that face to face would always be better than something written when it came to something personal. So make it personal. Make the connection and be responsible with your social media. I'll leave you with what Paul said about physical things in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. He said in verse 11, But you were washed, and you were sanctified, and you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of our God. Everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. And then in chapter 10, verse 23, he goes on to say, everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible, but not everything builds up. In other words, just because you can, doesn't mean you should. So let God have the final say in your decision. See what happens. This is Keith. This has been my perspective for the day, and I hope that it helps to bring you encouragement and maybe something else to think about in light of these trying times that we're experiencing. Thanks a lot. I love you. Bye. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand, when darkness fails it.